officially primary custodian of the kids. What about the child support? That's it? Tony, that's crazy. Why? Are you kidding me? That all of this financial burden with my children is on me? That's not fair. Based on her income, that brings her child support obligation to $2,300 per month. Reimbursing you for the health insurance that you carry for the children every month is $255. Bringing your monthly child support to $2,550. Okay. I, 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 that, no, excuse me. Wait a minute. I don't get paid monthly. Oh, I, it's according to how my houses are flipped. So if I go a month without flipping a house, what? Why did you do this? You no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Excuse me. I went off what you time. said. You, you said, Your Honor, I make about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Did you say that? I did. I did. I did. I did. I did say that. Right. 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 You, you did. You did. You did say that. So the cap, the that's cap, what I cap, based shut it up, on. Shut up. Shut up. Therefore, that's what your child support amount is going to be, two thousand five hundred and fifty dollars. So I hope you can flip enough houses to make that flip some more for these children. Is there anything further, ma'am? Um, yes, can I just ask a question? As far as sure. the tutoring, mm -hmm. what if I take my children to tutoring? What? You can, you mean like take them in a car? Yeah, like if I take them to tutoring, can I re like reduce that? Yeah, I don't want her I, that, that, no, I No, didn't, I didn't say you. To I answer, said my children. The, you said that you're, you're concerned with Did you with ask me the question or did you ask him the question? Okay. Oh, okay. To answer your question, no. Yes. It does not. It has no impact on that whatsoever. Transporting your children to tutoring is called parenting. All right. Is there anything further? Can I go? Oh, sure. As soon as I dismiss you. Is there anything further, sir? I just want to no. say, you know, God has blessed me in ways that I can't right, imagine. So now so you want to bring God in it. I just appreciate Ooh, you, you so for, for understanding Ooh, you my frustration and my pain. And, oh, well, yeah, I didn't I make a ruling that. based on your frustration and your pain. I made a ruling based on what the law said I can do with what's in the best interest of these children. Oh, and if there's teacher. nothing further, you both are dismissed. Me and my little teacher, yes, about to a little teacher. walk out with this $2,000 though. In November, I decided I no longer wanted to be a responsible parent and I gave up my kids. I was just tired of being responsible and caring for them. I felt like I was too young and I wanted to go out there and experience life and I started dating someone else so it just didn't fit with my new lifestyle. And I didn't have anything to worry about because the other parent is a very responsible parent. But now I'm here because now I'm in child support and to top it off, I'm really pissed off that I took care of them all the way up to November and I couldn't claim them on my taxes because the other parent had already claimed them. Only Superman can enter a marriage with a Western woman and not get burned. No, what the heck am I saying? Louis Lane would open her legs for Batman if she had the chance. No man is safe in marriage. What does marriage have to offer men? The only benefit for men is what is between a woman's legs. So I do not have the stats right in front of me. But the last I saw, these were the numbers I saw. Over 50% of marriages end in divorce. Over 80% of women get child support through the divorce courts. Over 90% of women get alimony, or as men say, the ex gets all the money. Many men who end up divorced can barely afford to pay their child support and alimony, and some live in their cars or under a bridge when they lose the car to the ex-wife. When they cannot pay their child support, they get sent to jail which means they are not working, and so they don't have the money to pay the back child support. So they get out of jail, having lost their job, and then because they can't pay the child support, they get sent back to jail. Many of the men end up committing suicide, so if you want your child support, stop sending them to jail. More men commit suicide. Nothing is ever mentioned in the news about that, but when one woman commits suicide, then all the news outlets freak and are all on board to get every dollar to build more women's shelters. There is one men's shelter in the States, thousands of women's shelters, yet there are more women abusing men than men abusing women. I'll approach this marriage topic as an investment proposition, stripping away the romance and procreation motivations. Looking at marriage as a startup partnership business investment where you have to put your entire present and future capital on the line. The conclusion is that the risk-reward analysis is unfavorable to men, and entering into it is not rational. When doing this sort of analysis, you have to consider the worst outcomes, as they are the ones that will cause problems. Good outcomes are rarely problematic. The inputs. To start with, 50% of marriages end in divorce, so as an enterprise, it has an even chance of failure. The average marriage lasts eight years. 
80% of the business dissolutions are initiated by the other partner, in this case, the wife. So prepare for this major investment to statistically have a 50% chance of failing in eight years at the decision of your partner. Men always come out worse in divorce settlements. So in the dissolution, without regard to contribution to the business, your partner gets the bulk of the remaining assets. Weigh that against not marrying, not making the investment. No risk of loss, however, there is an opportunity cost. You might have been in the other 50% that doesn't get divorced and lives happily ever after. All of your investment capital is yours to do what you choose. To be blunt, for a man it usually always comes back to the same question of risk versus reward in terms of marriage. Being married is no different than being in a regular long-term relationship. You will have your ups and downs, disagreements that turn into arguments, misunderstandings, and other problems as you get to know the person, which is all normal and cannot be avoided. The difference is usually people who marry do it before this lover bliss or honeymoon period is over. As a result, as soon as things slow down, the relationship becomes more committed and time passes. It is usually not always, but statistically, in most cases, the woman will get bored and file for divorce. She may say all the usual reasons why in court, but in my opinion the two main reasons for so many women filing for divorce first and so fast are 1. In her mind despite the vow she took of till death do us apart, once she is bored with the sex, heard all your stories, no longer laughs at your jokes, or just no longer emotionally invested in the man, it's time to go. In other words, once the thrill is gone, then she sees that as a reason to divorce. Number 2. With no-fault divorce laws in place and family courts that blatantly favour women, they have an actual incentive not to stay and work it out and see it more beneficial to simply divorce the man and take what they can in the process. The system is actually set up and designed to reach this outcome in most cases. The only way to change this dynamic is to take away the incentives for women to divorce so easily and then find an equal incentive for men to see marriage as equal or worth the investment and risk. The fact is, if the divorce laws were changed to be equal and not totally one-sided, or if alimony was completely done away with, or if after divorce, child custody was automatically 50-50, unless extenuating circumstances were present. Also, if child support was actually tracked for its use on the child, and not just given to one parent for whatever they want to spend it on. If these four things were changed as such, then men will not see as much risk with little reward, and women will not see so many incentives to divorce, and they will probably remain married longer, or at least try harder to make it work. Whatever benefit you get from marriage, outside of children, you can buy meals, housekeeping, decorating, and many more. The companionship benefits can be had through a short-term lease or rental, a girlfriend, or procured through other means. In other words, again barring children, you can get the same return on marriage without the capital risk. So it comes down to marriage being a risky proposition. As a man, you enter into a business that has a 50% chance of failure, mostly dissolved by the other party who takes most of the assets. Like the last line of the movie, War Games, the only winning move is not to play. That's all for today on Manhood. Don't forget to smash the like and subscribe buttons, and also click on the notification bell to be the first to know when I drop a new video. If you find value in my videos, you can show your support through PayPal or Cash App. The links are in the description. See you next time. Cheers.